Hi and welcome to Edge of Play's fourth World Cup vlog and what a game it was. Spain against Portugal. Cracking match, lots to talk about. Firstly though, I just wanted to remind you that edgeofplay.com is now live. This is a free online coaching resource. No charges whatsoever. If you go to the site, you'll be able to get lots of videos, downloadable content, you'll be able to favourite videos. And as we go along, more and more content will be added. You won't be bombarded with emails. There'll be no hidden charges whatsoever. This is a free coaching resource. So the Spain against Portugal game. We, we've been licking our lips at the thought of this game since it was drawn. Um, and it was really intriguing. Uh, rival teams, they border each other, which often brings that extra bit of, um, of energy to a match, definitely. <laughs> or aggression and hatred and so on. And history was how bold the Portuguese were early on. Uh, a nice tactical surprise from their manager to, to throw players forward and, and really have a go at the Spanish. I think they may have surprised the Spanish. I think they may have expected Portugal to sit off, let them have the ball and look to counter-attack. There, there were times the ball was played forwards and the Portuguese were literally lining up four men uh, up against the back four of the Spanish. So just kind of looking for second ball, looking to get there, not allowing any of these players any time when the ball was won back to play. It made the Spanish have to really think about it and of course it got them the early goal. Uh, Ronaldo, a bit of space, runs a man, gets the penalty, scores and there was a lot of pressure on the Spanish from that point forward. So even when they go behind, one thing that is typical of the Spanish team really is they, they don't, they very rarely get flustered by this. And one thing I noticed was how they were so happy to, to play in an area of the pitch where there's no space. It doesn't seem to bother them. A, a standard thing with coaching, you'd be saying if there was no space in this area of the pitch and the opposition, you know, you might be four on four, six on four, something like that in a small area, you look to work the ball out of this area, uh, switch the play, and then there's more pitch to play in and you can actually find more space to play. They don't rush to get out of a tight area. They're, they're completely happy with basically playing a rondo in that part of the pitch, um, and then they wait for their moment. They're quite happy to draw players into this area, into one area. They, they back themselves to keep hold of it in really tight spaces. Draw more and more players in, more space in other areas than when the ball does potentially come out of there. One thing Portugal did try to do was when they did get the ball back, was to attack quickly. It makes a lot of sense when you're playing a side that will spread out a great deal. When you win the ball back, there'll be big spaces to attack. Because Portugal did dare to leave players forward, did throw players forward, the second they got it back, particularly in the first half, it made it hard for Spain to get the rhythm to their play, and it kept them on, the, on edge all the time. There was always that feeling that Portugal could do a counter-attack. But Spain really did start to gradually take control uh, of the match and get the equaliser relatively early on would have helped them settle a bit. One approach the Spanish tend to use again and again is the cutback cross. They get into these areas where the ball can be played into these little channels. The natural movement of the defenders when the ball goes to these areas is to move and protect the goal. And if at least one of the Spaniards, maybe Costa, is heading in that direction, it's the cutback here then that can be so lethal. So players like Isco and Iniesta and Silva, either making the pass, the run, or being on for this ball to be cut back. The pace they do it at, and the timing of the movements, and the fact that players are also making these runs here as well, you can't just leave them there, you have to go and cover that. If they can get in behind you, the cut back cross can be lethal. Another thing I saw that I thought was quite interesting was on a, on a corner setup. Instead of kind of bunching together and saying, you know, we'll attack from here, the key players kind of lined up almost in a diagonal line like this. So instead of having like a horizontal approach to it. This diagonal line here, it does make it quite hard for the defenders. If the Portuguese are more zonal, then they could pick up, pick up this this way. Because they were man to man, this kind of situation does make it tricky for them, because you're almost offering them this space to be attacked into. If you spread your players out in a more vertical uh, or diagonal shape, it means the opposition are less likely to be able to block your runs. But the, the, the main headline to this game for me was that it was about the patience uh, of Spain and the mentality to stick to the way they believe they should play and that against this compact, hard-working, brave uh, Portuguese side as well just made for a fascinating match to watch. With, with Spain there is just no panic. You've got a team that has lost their manager just before the World Cup. You've got a team that is losing to a rival, um, uh, the rival who has one of the best players in the game in Ronaldo. You, you've got them, the, the fact that they go behind twice to this team, 
and they just carry on playing the way they play. There's no kind of sudden panic. They just believe the way they play will work for them. The rhythm of their play, once it gets going, it is so difficult for an opponent to stop that. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful football, the way they play, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Tiki Taka has kind of been overused now uh, as an expression, and I think they kind of begun to resent that as well maybe oversimplifying it. But that, 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 that close little one-twos, quick touch in the space and passing appreciation of the players, it's so deeply ingrained, it's almost an unconscious act now, the way they play. They don't, they don't have to think about it. I'll pass to him and I'll, then I'll go to there. It's just, it's just obvious to them. It just flows and flows, the ball moves. And it's almost like they're making the decisions whilst the ball is doing that. They're happy just to keep the ball circulating whilst they build up to an end play, to a movement that will create a goal scoring opportunity. So they can be little passes, very simple ball, just moving all the time. And while that's happening, you're seeing what the opposition are doing. And the Spanish seem so aware all the time of where a space opens up. And players are these making these movements and the right moment, the ball comes across and you think, well, how did they make that look so easy? Um, but it's that build-up, that build-up of ball circulation that makes it possible. It's just so ingrained in their training from, from a younger age, playing together, this is the way we play. And then that carried on through all those training sessions, all that build-up. They are very happy to pass to somebody who appears to be marked up. That is not a problem at all. He gets tired to hurt, it's laid off, he's now in more space. They're happy to do that all the time. Next time he sits off him because he's aware of covering this as well and he gets the ball, he turns and plays the ball. Gets too tight, lays it off. It's the same thing again and again. Ball's being passed to players that seemingly marked up, not for the Spanish. The, the Spanish players are prepared to put in one heck of a lot of running off the ball to make these moments happen. They show if it's done for long enough and the belief is there and everyone buys into it, just how effective that can be. They play as a team and it's, it's great to watch when it works. Another great bonus to this way of playing and this playing as a team is that you could take three or four of the players out of the team, put four different players in, you could lose a player to injury and it won't affect the team's shape, balance, the way they play too much because it's, it's almost as if the players come into this vibe, into this way of playing, this way of being on the pitch. They just come into that and join that culture. Uh, there's definitely individual ability, no doubt whatsoever. Saudi Arabia showed that perfectly decent footballers can't just make this look as easy as the Spanish do. It's all very well saying, oh yeah, we believe in playing the ball this way and playing the game this way. To actually follow that through when everything's going against you in a spell and not just to kind of go, oh, rip up the plans, do something different, it's not working, to stick to the plan there, it is quite something. It's real fortitude on behalf of the people that are coaching and managing uh, the Spanish team. Hierro, the, the, the a caretaker manager really of Spain, said um, after the game that the team knows what it wants. And I just like that idea. It's like the, the collective has one voice and, it, and, it, and this voice is completely clear, completely at ease with how it plays and what it will do. Uh, Hiera's response to De Gea's performance was, we don't have any doubts about De Gea and he doesn't have any doubts about himself. And you just think what a strong bit of encouragement. Uh, he believes in his players, the players believe in themselves. Spain probably should have killed the game then in that point. There was areas of real technical brilliance in the game. Ronaldo's free kick, like I say, absolutely fantastic. Uh, under pressure against one of the maybe the best goalkeeper in the world who did not have a great game, granted, but still, what a free kick to play there. Um, Nacho's finish, look at that finish, what a strike that was. Um, really difficult to, to control the power of the ball coming across, struck it perfectly. And that is coming after he was the player that gave the penalty away at the start of the game. And you just see the, the mental strength there of the Spanish team. The, the Portuguese team as well, to be honest, the way they scrapped, the way they found a way to give the Spanish different things to think about, throwing players forward, counter-attacking quickly. Uh, they, 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 they never let the Spanish completely settle, uh, and that is credit to them, because player for player, the odds were all on the Spanish team to win that game. So it was a brilliant game, wasn't it? Um, really exciting to watch. Portugal played a huge part in that. It was three all in the end, really exciting. So much to, to, to kind of appreciate about the game. Um, but yeah, it certainly looks like Spain absolutely will be in the mix, you would think, from that, um, just by the fact they're playing as a team. Uh, we ask you to now subscribe to the site if you can. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our YouTube pages. Comment, um, get involved in discussion, and I really hope you enjoyed the World Cup so far. We'll see you at the next vlog very soon.